Okay, hello everyone. Welcome to SAS, our spirituality and support symposium. Think morning witchy chats around a warm campfire. The recording has started and by participating in SAS, you agree to the terms of engagement, which I'm going to post in the chat. Um, we ask that you stay muted for clarity during the recording. Um, and we'll get started with a few announcements. So let's see, we're starting off March. So we had our first for Foundations members, our first Sacred Space meeting yesterday. We have two more coming up on the 7th. And this is where we start to engage with the new workbook for March. And that's posted in our members area. And if you need any help with the members area, getting your workbook or getting any meeting links, you can just send us a message. On our website, you can use the chat function or support uprightanddark.org. We have two workshops coming up in March on the 10th and the 16th. Um, one is um, a second workshop from one we had in January, and uh, because that one was sold out. And the other one, uh, we got a lot of questions around um, working with the spirit of your home on our social media. And so we created a workshop for it. And that one is also coming up. So you can go to our website under workshops, um, or you can check out our calendar on the website, the calendar is available to everyone. And you can see those two workshops coming up for March. So that's Life is Magic and um, the, I forget what the other one's called, but it's about the spirit of your home. <laughs> that one. Uh, the it has Enchanted a, Hearth. <laughs> there we go, The Enchanted Hearth. <laughs> Um, and of course, if anyone just has any questions in, in general, you can reach out to us. Um, for anyone that's brand, brand new watching this, on the 15th of every month is where we gather for your foundation's dedication. And this is where you we you create your dedication candle for our meetings. Um, we also have a foundation's starter kit in the shop. And so now would be the time to get that if you want, just so it'll arrive to you in time for the 15th. But that happens on the 15th of every month. So if you miss it, you can just join the next one. And for any existing members, maybe your candle is burned down, or maybe you want another candle for any of your other workings, and you just want a sacred space to do that in, you can come to that meeting and do your candle there. So, ta-da! Thanks for coming. We now can start the witchy chat. All right. What have you guys been experiencing this week? I feel like it's been a long time since I've been at SAS. It's been a couple of weeks, hasn't it? Yeah. Because I was in Oregon and I was doing the uh, our first staycation style um, curated experience for witches uh, in the safety and familiarity of your own home. And it was a wild success and so much fun that we've already started planning a summer edition in Alaska. Um, I often... I tell everyone that every witch should experience the midnight sun. Uh, experiencing summer sol or summer solstice when the sun never sets is just like, it's really cool. And I thought that doing a virtual experience would be a really great way to get you guys like in on that in some way. So super excited about that. Um, so we planned that or started planning that this last week. Very exciting. Uh, but there were two things that I wanted to bring up to you guys. Mm, this is fun. The first was look at the Rose of Jericho from this morning's live. Look at it. It's already opening up. Isn't that cool? If I tip it anymore, I'll dump water out. But so this, uh, this Rose of Jericho represents the magic within uh, witches that are looking to remember who they are. Uh, it's an encouragement and is uh, kind of lending energy of luck and prosperity and all of that to 
those of you that are finding your way back to cultivating a relationship with your magic. Um, oh, what was I thinking? So I had an interesting experience this morning, actually, where we had three days of this like really, really, really intense windstorm. And windstorms for me are a really massive sensory experience because of just the constant uh, movement in everything, right? And so this morning at like three o'clock in the morning, I was woken up out of a dead sleep by an owl that was like hooting right outside my window uh, in a tree right by my window. And uh, Rufio and Stella were not having that at all, by the way. So that was fun. But, and then when I, um, later that morning, when I let Rufio and Stella out, I realized how just like eerily quiet everything was. It was just this like, you couldn't hear anything. And uh, it felt highlighted to me. And I thought I'd like bring that here to you guys to see if anyone wants to like take a stab at interpretation or uh, if it brought up any kind of like feeling or flow in you guys. Or if you had like a similarly feeling signature-ish experience <laughs> or totally different. All I'm doing is starting the flow of conversation for you guys. And, and if this is your first meeting, guys, at any point, you can raise your hand if you like pick up on something. If you if it's it doesn't even have to be related to what we're talking about. You can completely side quest the conversation if you feel the whim to do so. And we're going to celebrate that. So hi, Isabel. you want to sorry <laughs> okay. good morning everyone good morning um that's a beautiful way to wake up by the way to hearing of the owl in the wind so um i've been to mexico twice but my first time is when i was 11, 10 11 anyhow my parents took me to visit my grandmother my maternal side of my grandmother and um she was this very beautiful lady which now i know that she was a practicing witch back then i didn't know that but in the area where she lived it happened once while i was there that an owl came and her belief was that oh an ancestor was there to visit her and it depended if she didn't feel it right if something was off, that it was a message for her from an ancestor that, hey, tap, tap, something's going on. But in that particular time that I was there, it was a similar experience. There was a lot of wind. It was beautiful. It, it was like a rainstorm in the summer also. And she said, oh, I think the ancestors are happy to see you here. So they came to visit. And I took that with me. And now when I see an owl by where I live, because I live close to mountains, I I rejoice because now I just think of my grandmother when I see this. There's a white owl that lives not too far from here. It's always flying back and forth at night. So I think of her and I think that, oh, she's keeping an eye on me. So... That's just my two cents of my story. Thank you so much. That was incredibly validating, actually. Uh, mm. Thank you so much for sharing that. <laughs> I've been doing a lot, a lot, lot of ancestral work. A lot, lot of ancestral work. And it makes perfect sense why that would be that. So thank you, Jenny Lee. I'd also love to hear anyone else's interpretation of what an owl coming to you would be. 
I always think um, when I was little, there was a hoot owl that lived in the tree right outside my window. And it was a female hoot owl. Um, the male lived about a half a block away. And so they would talk all summer long, just constantly. So that became my night music in the summer. Um, and anytime, anytime I see an owl or anytime, you know, one wakes me up in the night, that kind of thing, I always think I need to be present in the moment. I need, I need to be right here, right now for a reason. Don't know what that is, but you need to take some time. And I've had owls just, you know, fly in front of the car and just stop. You know, I go to a friend of mine. He lives down a long gravel road. There's always, if I go down there at night, I will see at least one owl. So I always stop the car and just give it a beat or two, you know, just to recognize the owl. Yes, I'm paying attention. It's okay. And then go on. But yeah, I think, I think owls are such silent bringers of awareness they don't have to be loud and obnoxious like i am <laughs> all the time that is that is a quiet reminder to be right here so yeah i love that i love that isabel is oh okay you answer my question. <laughs> Ocean. Oh my gosh, I forgot I raised my hand. I was writing notes. Um, all great stuff. Um, getting a lot lately, like ever since my birthday, it feels like my channel has just been flooded. Um, so that's fun. Um, owl stories, yes. So, uh. Owls have been a symbol for me ever since I started looking into the things unseen. Um, the very first thing I really got into was crystals, actually. And I had a friend who would, we would all go hang out at her house and she would have everybody pick a crystal. Like they'd, we'd all close our eyes and she had a tray. She'd walk around with crystals and we'd all pick one and she'd tell us about them. Super fun, witchy stuff. Um, and I had so much fun with that, that when I went to go with my usual like smoke group and hang out one night, I brought a bag of crystals with me and I had all the guys, like I was smoking with a bunch of like cis straight dudes. So I had them all pick crystals and I wanted to tell them about it. And like, you know, I was sitting in a room full of mostly skeptics and, uh, we were outside because you couldn't smoke cigarettes inside, only cannabis. And so we were outside because some of us smoked cigarettes. And there was an owl um, on one of the lampposts, like nearby or like the the electricity line. And it was hooting. And I was like, I feel like we have to go find that. And they all agreed. Like we all felt like we had to go figure out like to see this owl. And so we went and we saw and we found it. And I looked it up later and I was messaging the group chat with those guys. And I was like, hey, so I was looking up like about owls and it seems like it's like a death of a way of being, a death of a way of life. It's a, it's a, um, like almost like the tower, right? Like it's, it's seems like that kind of energy is what I was telling them. And they were all skeptical again, like they were about the crystals and they're like, no, nah, no way. And like two months later, this whole group, our, every single one of us, our lives took another direction. And we, I didn't see those guys again. And the group chat like was gone. And like, just all of a sudden this entire like way of being this, this social dynamic. And in every part of my life that like ended up happening. And, um, I had been getting a lot of animal sinks at the time. I was actually working at a horse rescue. And so I had been getting like moths and um, spiders and webs and um, just the horses were very 
spiritually talkative. I think that that's like the main thing that I miss about my old way of living, like this old kind of like when I was like really in it was the only time I really felt spiritual was when I was talking to animals and horses were are like some of the most spiritual beings that I've ever like had a conversation with or a connection with. But but yeah, the owl and then I got another owl before I moved out here to Hermiston too. Um, we got these weird fruit roll-ups that we never get. Like we, Ian and I are both super autistic. So we tend to get the same foods over and over. And he bought these fruit roll-ups and he was like, these looked really good. And they looked kind of healthy. They ended up tasting so terrible. Like they were just really gross and like bitter. And, um, but they all came with these little cards that had little like, um, like a maze on the back. And then on the other side, it had, would have like a woodland animal. And I remember I kept the one that had a gray owl on it. And I was like, I don't know, this one just feels important. Like, I don't even remember any of the other ones that I got. I just remember keeping that one once I got it. And it's so funny how even when you aren't actively interacting in the natural world, the, the animals that have messages for you will still find a way to find you. And that's the end of my thought. Go ahead, Maria. Thanks. So I um I have my little owl friend here that sits on my altar. I don't know if you can see it. So um it, about a week ago, I was well, I got an article, um, read the article from New York Times. There is the um this owl that escaped from the zoo and lived in Central Park. And people would just go to Central Park to like be with this owl and it was just like a really amazing thing. And this, you know, they just kind of then let the owl just like, didn't try to catch it, just let it like hang out and it would just hang out in Central Park. Um, and I think like the owl just passed away and people were just like honoring the owl. And um, I just thought that was like really cool. And I had like a picture of the owl in my phone. It's just owls to me are like very majestic and very magical. And when I was feeling into, and too, like this morning, I got two pictures of owls. One actually that Alicia's not, oh, Alicia is here. Alicia posted, popped up on my uh, timeline and another um, picture of an owl. But owls to me, because you can't always see them. And when you do see them, you're there, you're like, oh my gosh, it's an owl. Like it's like, or they, I do that. Like, you know, because they kind of can camouflage really well or you know, and when I was feeling into it, when you just ask it, it kind of gives me the high priestess vibe, um, in particular, like, um, the unseen coming into like the scene, um, like the, the presence of maybe like the hidden truths and, and mysteries and things like that is kind of the vibe that I get from the owl. Um, yeah. Thank you. That one's especially pokey uh, for me. They laugh because they know like I have been the most resistant to that role, the role of high priestess. The Even though I've initiated like twice into that role, I have I've been so resistant to it. Um, so every time it comes up, it's like, <laughs> yes yes uh i think that some of that is that i i need to be that resistant to the traditional role of a high priestess and that hierarchical nature of it and kind of redefine it to be more of a servant leadership theory right so that it's the the role of what the height and I I hate gendered magic. <laughs> I'm super resistant to that. And if we could find a name for the role of the support person for a community, the emotional and uh, or the the person in a community that uh, holds the that space between the physical world and the spirit world. Um, and communicates that like if there was a name for that that was gender fluid I would totally embrace that 
um, that is non-hierarchical. Uh, yeah, a bridge. A bridge witch. That's kind of cool, actually. I'm going to pause with that. <laughs> Across, oh, we can't use crossroads because that's not quite what it is too it means some crossroads means something else uh and, and anyway anywho that was a fun little rabbit hole how many of you is this your very first sass by show of like emojis you can put like a heart on your screen or whatever you're allowed to be shy you've all been to a sass before <laughs> he uh, Ezra, hi. Hi. I wanted to hop on the owl train for just a sec. What it makes me think of is, um, I think a lot about, like, I get a lot of animal sinks, and I, I love animals, so I'm always, uh, um, I don't know, like, just, like, I imagine so many different forest creatures as symbols of, of what, I feel like they're just very, ancient like um like archetypes and stuff and so I think about when I think of an owl I also think of a crow at the same time like because in nature they're like enemies a lot of the time like they um like owls are very mean to crows <laughs> but they also I think probably drive like the evolution of crows um like it's probably part of the reason that uh, crows are so freaking smart um which also kind of like does this like owl as a teacher type of thing in my head so i think a lot about um animals that are in constant like circular uh fights or dances with each other um like i also get like fish and otter um coming up and like snake and badger and like a bunch of different things that feel it feels like a yin and yang like cycle of the universe almost like the ouroboros like snake eating itself but like in two like type of thing so like it shows you like uh a cycle of nature and that kind of but yeah that's just what came up for me i think about the about uh nature in pairs a lot even if it comes like a either as friends or enemies because there's not that big of a difference <laughs> but it's, it's like um mm -hmm. and i also that made me think of the whole um wolves and crows um hunting with each other thing so which is really cool um but i feel like in nature there is that back and forth um that happens like and it has a very similar vibe as the in and out you know breathing um that we always that we kind of always go back to <laughs> um it feels like that's that's just it just i don't know it, it makes me it really makes me oh yeah that was another the other part is that it reminds me too of like air currents like when they hit each other and, and like um like make whirlwinds um or storms or anything like that like that's another kind of duality that it reminds me of so especially as um you know since they're both air creatures <laughs> owl, owl and uh crow as i was talking about them but yeah that's what it made me think about Also, Thank the you. next full moon. Yeah, sorry, one one second. Um, because like this kept coming up while you guys were talking about it, but I found out that one of the interpretations of the next full moon, um, is called the crow comes back moon, and it's based most of the uh, vote most of the versions of the moon are all about animals of some kind because. Um, it's basically when when they're coming out again, you know, spring, spring wise, <laughs> like they're finally coming out of their their little holes and and reintroducing themselves to the world. And so that's very, you know, on brand for what we're all going through, probably. <laughs> all right, Maria. 
I just wanted to read a question from the chat. Uh, is the white raven still showing up? Jen Marie, I think that was to you. Yeah. <laughs> it is. It totally is. And there's still like fan club that follows it around Anchorage taking pictures. <laughs> so it's this whole thing of like, let's go find the white raven. And uh, which I think is is cute in some ways, but people can be problematic when they become obsessive with things like that. So we'll see how that goes. <laughs> thanks guys for all weighing in on the the owl stuff <sighs> totally tracks that all makes sense mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. if anyone else wants a uh broad spectrum interpretation of anything if you can't tell we're into it <laughs> You can also change the topic. Mm -hmm. What's been on your mind? You can also share uh, if you have any plans for uh, the spring equinox. Do you have any workings going on? Are you feeling any like nudgings toward any like particular kind of workings? Ocean. Yes. So I didn't really think of it as a spring equinox equinox working. I and you know, it actually it made me think of like as I've begun practicing magic, because um I kind of I don't really let me put it this way. Let as I began intentionally practicing connection-based magic, um I was like focused on the days and then it became easier to focus on like a week at a time with like I mean that you know like it wasn't all perfectly aligned like there were definitely moments of just pure chaos which is fine like I that's fine but uh and then lately I've become more focused on the month so I'm wondering if next year I'll be able to zoom a little bit out more to the year because like this last year, I didn't celebrate any holidays. It never felt aligned. Like we really just didn't. And uh, I didn't feel the need to really do much for like New Year's Eve. I mean, I wanted to make it fun for my friend who was visiting me, but sorry, I'm getting a little off track. Um, so, but I was uh, talking with Ezra about the full moon and uh, we were talking about the new moon and um talking about a uh oh my gosh what was what was the ritual um I'm sorry I'm so blanking um it's fine I'm just gonna take up space over here <laughs> um And I was saying that would be perfect for the full moon. It was, um, I can't remember. Well, okay, essentially it's March, right? So I'm totally gonna work on this. I I apparently refused to ask for help, so. <laughs> Um, so it's March and it's the whole inner child thing. And I'm feeling like, um, aligning like time or not, not even aligning time, but just
I feel like it was about time. I just remember talking about time and how I'm trying to let go of um like believing in the reality of it. There was actually a post. It was just a meme that I reposted on Facebook that was like saying that there's a different number of minutes this year. So adjust your uh your plays of like rent accordingly. And um somebody commented on it with like a little like fact about how many minutes there are in a year and like saying that it like never changes or something and I was like it's funny how we really believe in these tools of measurement that we've like we like we really feel like these things don't change because we've created tools around measuring a certain thing and we're like okay I understand that tool therefore I understand everything I've used that tool like to understand and so like I feel like springtime for me is just kind of like letting go and allowing for the flow and like not trying so hard to like plan because I really want to like plan things out and know what things are coming and my guides for this whole month no like and it's like I usually talk about dreaming and stuff and like you know, I, I come on here all the time and I talk about the kind of community I want to build because I think it's really magical to talk to a bunch of witches about like, you know, my dreams and community and stuff, because I think that's how it gets manifested. And um, yep, <laughs> my brain stopped there again, too. Okay. I will relinquish to Maria. Go ahead. Thank you. I, Isabel was before me. Oh, thank you. The The order got switched up on me. It does that. It's trickery. Thank you, Maria. Um, this is nothing on Equinox, but right when you were opening the conversation to anything that we wanted to share, um, this week I've been on a high just... From something that happened to me last week, I've always practiced magic in a way that, so not to, never with words of bending any one's um, perspective, instead changing me or protecting me because I'm the one that wants to receive good or protection. So if I'm making any sense. Um, so last weekend, there was an event that was going to take place and I was highly anxious and nervous about the night before I took myself into my room. I did a protection spell, but in a way that felt, I felt like it was magical. And I, I was done and I was tired and I was feeling rejoiced and Anyhow, the day of the event came, and as if it couldn't have been more clear, I asked for protection of everything being spiritual by words, physically, and the day, manif the day manifested itself so, so clear that I wanted to just yell in excitement. I felt like... I don't know, the first time I had ice cream and I wanted to tell my husband and my kids, and which I did, but I was just like, oh my God, did you just see that? It was like to the T, everything came to my protection and my aid. And you know, I never spoke to anyone that I was feeling anxious about, of course. I never tend to, but I'm like, and I was just so excited. For this magical spell to have worked its wonders in a most beautiful and peaceful way but it was so strongly evident that if any other day had I not done that I know how what the outcome would have been because it's repeated itself so many times but this particular day was just so magical that I even want to tell strangers, which I'm never going to do, of course, but 
it's that kind of thing that you want to just stop someone and say like, oh my God, did you just see that? And, and so I just wanted to share my, you know, my joy in what happened to me. I don't know if I made any sense. I'm being very vague, but just wanted to show, share my joy. That's amazing, okay. Isabel. Thank you for sharing that. That's so awesome. Thank you for listening. So I haven't uh, <clears throat> haven't um, created any like specific rituals, but feeling what I'm feeling into the spring and since <clears throat> paying attention to the feelings and the energy when the season changes and um spring for me like doesn't fuck around like spring like you know like you think like oh it's spring like everything's blooming and which is awesome and I love that and seeing that is exciting but the energy is like action energy I my system and me are very comfortable with hermit energy I like the winter I like going in my bed getting under my covers like goodbye world like this is my, my I'm in like my own little universe I'm really good at that <laughs> um I'm good at resting I'm good at napping like I've gotten I've gotten good at that but this action energy as if it wasn't apparent I have like these three dreams last night, these three separate dreams calling me out, totally calling me out on like the things that are in the shadows, like my shadow work. And it's just like, okay, like let's, let's get it going. Like we're waking up, we're like doing the thing. And I've been doing a lot of manifestation work, which I'll continue like to do throughout the year. Um, and really working on my beliefs and um, do I feel worthy of, you know, do I, and you know, do I feel, um, do I truly believe with my whole being um, of what, what I want and um, practicing, practicing with that. And so like these three particular dreams last night were like calling me out on like my shadow work of things that. I'm so kind of working through <laughs> and so and then like the birds are just chirping at 5 a.m and it's just all like okay like now you know now's the time to do the thing like you had your long rest and now we're awake and there's like a joke that you might have heard some of the members say like I don't like being told what to do and it is a joke but it's also very true and so it's like this like i'm being <laughs> nudged to like do the thing and i'm like i just want to go back to bed like what the fuck <laughs> so that's just like <laughs> what i'm feeling right now and so what i when i was feeling into it it was like balance you know because i can like feel that energy and so then i'm like oh this is what i'm supposed to be doing i'm supposed to be doing all the things and blah 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 and then get burnt out and blah 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 and the cycle just and I'm like, no, like, what are we going to do? You know, like looking back, like, and so finding kind of that, that balance of like, yes, I'm hearing the call. I'm hearing it. Okay. I have some deeper levels of shadow work on these particular things, but, but it is also exciting. It's exciting that like, um, because I, I'm someone that does welcome change. And so like, I can feel that there is a change coming. So I'll leave it at that. Jen Marie. I love that you said that. Here, let me lower my hand before I forget because I totally will. There we go. Uh, for me, springtime is, so like specifically the point uh, between February, that halfway point between the winter solstice and the spring equinox, starting about there is when things start to be revealed as far as ways that I need to support my spiritual practice or physical practice better, uh, I often will experience big catalysts. So uh, like 
revelatory experiences, have these deep conversations with people where relationships need to change or all of those kinds of things. That happens to me around this time of the year. And I see that as I need this information so that the seeds that I'm planting have the best opportunity for growth. And as difficult as this kind of time can be and how frustrating it can be, um, without fail, like every year it all, it makes sense. Why? And when I'm in resistance to making these changes that are being revealed, that's when I'm, I experience a bunch of suffering and things are really difficult. Uh, and when I lean into it and actually do the thing because I'm, I'm super stubborn, like what Maria was saying too. Like, don't tell me what to do. <laughs> don't make me do the thing. Uh, but the more I get into that practice of paying attention and then creating, you know, some kind of support for whatever is revealed, whether that's like, uh, I don't know. Uh, being more present with your life, um, having healthier boundaries. There's so many different things, different kinds of like spiritual seeds that you would plant for a year. Uh, but yeah, so sweet. <laughs> this is another reason why it's so important for you guys to keep track of the things that you are experiencing and your interpretation of the things that you are experiencing so that you can look back and have all that data to start seeing your annual cycles, your seasonal cycles, because your system as a witch interacts with these changes in its own way. And by you paying attention to that and uh, kind of leaning into it, it life-changing life-changing all right Ezra go ahead um yeah I get a lot like I'm actually a much more comfortable um on the other half of year <laughs> I'm like an inward person and I like I make even that's even part of why I love shadow work so much because it just it feels like that's like the dark part and that's always been like my favorite I like was joking with ocean about like there's this really cool like short um like story that I always tell people when I'm trying to describe what shadow work is to me that's a nonviolent communication thing where it's like somebody's kneeling in the middle of the road under a street light and somebody else comes up to them and originally in the story the person that comes up to them is a cop but i decided to when i tell the story i'm not going to make him a cop anymore because why it's not relevant um and so the gut person the passerby comes up to the person kneeling in the road and says like what are you doing and the kneeling person says well i'm i'm looking for my keys and he says oh and the other person says oh um did you drop them here and the kneeling person says no i dropped them in the alley but the light's so much better over here and the whole idea is that like we often go searching for things where the lighting is better just because it's like safer even though we know we're not going to find what we're looking for um and i was joking with ocean that i feel like i live in the alley and i'm playing with all the keys <laughs> like like and then the light comes somebody comes over with like a flashlight and i'm like hissing <laughs> like at them <laughs> like that kind of person um like I've always just like been really comfortable with like sub with like with talking about anything and um which is why it's always really interesting to me when there is something that that is uncomfortable for me and like shows me where my shadow work is because I'm like oh, oh wow that's that's really interesting <laughs> like that I still have that and you always still have it like there's always like a, you know a place that you can go that you weren't looking before um which is i guess what makes life uh fun but <laughs> and one of the things so actually i realized um that i planned a road trip for the spring equinox to go visit like a friend of mine 
And it's one of those things that like, I definitely, I didn't, like, I knew I wanted to do it then, but I didn't really do it in, uh, intentionally at that point. Like, I wasn't looking it up and saying, I'm going to go on a road trip on the, the spring equinox. I just kind of, like, was feeling into when I wanted to do it. Um, and what's interesting is that it, it has, in preparing for, it's just like a, I mean, it's a pretty long road trip, but it's only going to last a few days because um, I love to drive. And so... Um, and it's an opportunity for me to be present while dri driving and like to sort through. I always feel like I go through road trips and if I do it intentionally, I'm literally moving myself. Like, like I, if that makes sense, like it feels like I'm intentionally trying to like when I get back, I will intentionally like be in a new world that I have like it's part of like a manifestation process and that that movement and the time and seeing all of like the trees pass and the road pass like that is a very like visual and um sensory thing that feels very real so it helps me process that idea of like i'm moving a long way in this manifestation i guess um and what came up was that like part of the reason I'm go like, I'm going to go visit a friend um, who is a trans woman who I've known since we were both kids. And so we ended up both being, both being trans um, and, and like non-binary and um, witchy and <laughs> like autistic and ADHD and like all this stuff. So it's like, no wonder we were such close friends, but um, I ended up, it ended up being like I had to, like I don't have to, but I was keeping some of their stuff. Hi, um, my mom just checked in on me, but um, I was keeping some of their stuff from the move that they didn't have room in their car for, and so I'm bringing them the rest of that stuff, and so it feels like a completion type of thing. And then they asked me to go pick up um, stuff that they were keeping with someone else and that someone else is like related is like my ex's brother and so that feels and I haven't like spoken to them since we broke up and so that feels like a very big like um moment for me because that was a very difficult time in my life and it's pretty much like a three-year cycle type of thing that feels like it's completing by me having this opportunity to go talk to people that I haven't talked to in a while and like that were childhood friends and like um it just feels like very much like a mission for my for my inner child to go complete <laughs> um and so I think now that I'm realizing I'm gonna be I'm literally gonna be doing this road trip around the spring, spring equinox I need to like figure out some how to make it uh even more magical than it is so i appreciate you guys about you guys bringing that up because i think because that's I, I i feel like whenever i'm doing a plan like that a lot of times it turns out to be something that i didn't realize i was like kind of channeling when i made the plan um and then it ends up being like falling into place pretty well but that's that's always like the message I feel like I get from my guides it's like what do I do and it's like you're doing it <laughs> like um so I feel like we often don't realize that we're doing better than we think we are <laughs> all right someone else say something now <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I, from my rambling, um, which had no closure, I actually realized because I started taking notes, I was like, no, I know that I had an idea. So I took some notes on it and I realized that our conversation had been uh, essentially around being trans 
like in general like the um it feels like i'm releasing resistance um a lot of my talk was about my top surgery and it feels like a lot of my work right now is releasing resistance around having a relationship with my body and having a relationship to change um and it feels like uh especially with the gender magic course that we've written and uh we're we're pushing off a couple months so that hopefully um it'll give more people more time to be able to um attend and um I'm thinking this moon cycle is about trans, uh, manifesting trans liberation, because it not only it not only starts with the inner child, and hearing them fully out, which is like what March is all about, but it goes all the way to creating systemic change, systemic change starting from within, and this feels like the culmination of what I've been talking about for like months now. And spring just blossoming and blooming like that, that spring forward energy is, cause that's the thing, like deconstructing gender isn't about, it's not about change. It's about being more yourself. It's not about trying to make more people trans it's trying to let more people be exactly who they are without having to be burdened by the ideas of what somebody else thinks of your gender and how you should be and that's just really important to me And that's the end of my thought. I love that ocean. I am also getting major liberation vibes and, um, you know, and when I was talking about like a three-year cycle, like I literally, it was on Easter three years ago that I came out as trans to like my family and friends and everything. So, um, and so that's pretty much that is the that's the, that's also a three year cycle that happened for me, um, and I think that my breath just came in um, and almost fell. <laughs> um, let's see. So I think like and, and actually that's a good point because I've been talking a lot more about and realizing um how important like all kinds of liberation are to me and like how much of that is my personality and um how that how like society has made it very uncomfortable for me to talk about um growing up and so I think like because I was always very worried about being annoying and I think as I learn to become more intentional with my words um, and accept myself, like that I'm going to, I uh, there might be people that I annoy and maybe that is part of like both of our journeys is for me to, that's okay because if it's really important to me to speak about what I consider like to be liberation then and, um then it's peop like uh it's very people pleasy of me <laughs> to <laughs> to decide that I'm just not ever gonna say it to make sure everyone else is comfortable all the time. Um, and also I am, that makes sense because I am writing a um, song about being a people pleaser right now to release that tendency. 
So I also wrote a song about perfectionism for the same reason. And like basically all the coping mism, coping mechanisms that we, that we uh, gather in order to live <laughs> in the world that we do. So, yeah. It's good stuff. Mm -hmm. MF is next, I think. <laughs> hey, y'all. Um, hi. Um, I just wanted to, you know, tie in a couple of things. One, the road trip thing actually makes so much sense now because a lot of my biggest, like, life events have happened around major road trips. And, like, they've been very transformative for me in a lot of ways. So, like, that kind of tie in to manifestation and like the seeing all those changes and everything like that when you're on a major road trip sorry um does <laughs> make a lot of sense uh and then from as far as the spring equinox goes no i don't have anything planned for it but i think that's something really interesting to consider when everyone's kind of talking about you know big changes the winds of change what you're manifesting what you're you know bringing into this new season and I was thinking about it because just like in the last couple of days I realized that I've kind of I need to let go of one of my manifestations not like let go like I don't want it to happen but let go like I need to kind of like give it to the universe to happen in its due time and to not only like as part of kind of that letting go of control and just continuing to learn to connect to everything but also like but also just to like let things happen in their due time and not try to control it or push for it or make it happen you know and just understand that like not to be too wishy-washy but just like what will be will be and it'll happen in its due time to just not like expect that so that is my thought Thank you. Thank you. Jemmerine. That's a tricky balance though, isn't it? Momo Fairy. That's much easier said than done. Right. Because you, you have to like... Because that, like, uh, leaning into the planning and this, like, in order to, for my dreams and this this thing to happen, I have to force it through and I have to push and I have to, like, influence it in this very, like, uh, controlling way. And that shift to learning to trust that your that if it's meant for you, it will stick around, that you will know what to do when it's time to do something, and that uh, that the rest and the pause is just as important as those times of forward momentum because it's in the rest and the pause that things slow down enough for you to be able to see what some of those decisions are. And for you to be able to collect that data, which is what we're doing, and feeling into what do I really want to participate in? How do I really want to participate in whatever it is that you're trying to like bring forward? Um, and a lot of people right now, what I'm hearing a lot in the witchcraft communities are that really bringing your awareness to how you are participating in the uh or how you are perpetuating a reality that you don't want how are you actively perpetuating what you don't want and what does what you do want look like and how can you in small ways choose to participate in that more right that's kind of this like this uh, underlying current that seems to be kind of going on by show of like emojis. How many of you actually relate to that kind of thing? 
Right. And, and this is really, yeah, oh, go sorry. ahead. Go ahead. Oh, I, I just saying it's funny that you say balance because I keep pulling a card that says balance. And I think that like, that's just such a huge shift for me is trying to learn that I can't do all of the things all of the time and how to balance it all, you know, like work, kids, house, spirituality, taking care of myself, which almost always comes last and just all the things around that, you know, and, um, but also like the balance of what I'm letting go of. And it's not to say that I'm letting go of, you know, taking those inspired actions to, you know, reach those things. It's just letting go of trying to control it, you know, and that is really difficult, I think, for a lot of us um, to accept. Yeah. And it's actually one of those things that is so common that we work with it in foundations. <laughs> like, why do we do this? Um so we're good. If you haven't gotten to that month, you're going to, we're going to get to that month where we kind of dive deeper into the, like, why do we do those kinds of things? Um, ooh, I just totally lost what I was going to say. That's fun. Other than that, I totally lost what I was going to say. So <laughs> go ahead, Maria. <laughs> it will come back. <clears throat> so this is like probably what I spent most of my brain time thinking about these types of things. So um, we're just going to go on a little journey through Maria's brain. It's okay if you don't, you know, like if everything I say doesn't resonate with you, like that's okay. But I also um, like uh, in my scrolls, um, like if you know who Bashar is, I, a lot of their videos pop, pop up for me. And a lot of what they say gives me a, like things to think about in this realm of topic and so when, when I joined foundations, when we got, I, I can look back at my journal, what month it is, but when I had like the realization of what manifestation actually was and what I thought it was, I hysterically started crying. <laughs> I was like bawling my eyes out. I had such an emotional because I was like, what the fuck? This is, th I, nobody told me, like, I could have been doing this all along and now I'm, you know, what, so working through all of that, but I just had such a, um, a strong response to it. And I was like, oh, oh, that's, that's what we're doing. I can do that. Like, okay. And so, but there's the shadow work. And then there's this, there's this bit about that, that I've, was listening to videos of Bashar and talking about, um, you know, like that kind of like, like attracts like, and so it's like, well, tell the universe what you prefer. So it's kind of like, just like, what don't you prefer? And what do you prefer? And if you take action towards the things you prefer, it's like that, like, right. Attracts like, and it's not bad. Like, it's not like right or wrong or like that it, it's bad or good. I've, I've kind of deconstructing that is it's just the physics or whatever you, the smarter people, you know, the people that are smarter than me, like that are into all that stuff. Like it's actually science um, as well, you know, like there's physics involved and, and, but anyways, I don't know enough about that to speak on it. So, um, but I'm interested in it. And so, you know, it's like, okay. So like, I've been in this, you know, this job, that I would like to change, but I've been doing what I'm doing for a long time. And it's like, but I just keep doing what I've been doing. And so the universe is like, oh, so here's more like kind of, you know, where, so I'm just, I'm sorting through like that bit bucket of it. But what it like pinged me about today was um, like the, what people think karma is and what I feel like, what I'm, what I'm exploring is like karma. I don't feel is really karma. I feel it's more of this, like this manifestation bit of it, where it's not like, like what comes around is what is because like, that's the energy, like, you know, like the, the, the more of the like attracts like, and so that's, I don't know if I made any sense, but, um, 
<laughs> totally I did. So yeah, just kind of really feeling into, and then I'm a come from a very controlling um, place with, with myself um, trying saying like, okay, I want this to happen. And so like in my previous years, I would want this to happen. And so I would like construct exactly how I thought that should happen and what I needed to do to exactly get that to happen, make that happen for myself. And it worked like some, some of that worked for me, you know? Um, but at this point, I no longer to want to engage in that, in that way. And the reason why I don't is because I realized I was limiting myself to the possibilities that the universe could show me to the amazing things that will happen that I can't see yet. And that I might be, I might, you know, I, because I was like wanting to control the step-by-step step, rather than saying, um, I would like all of my needs to be met fully and whatever that, you know. And so rather than being like, I want, uh, like previously my, my, my thoughts would have been, I want to make a hundred thousand dollars a year. And that would have been what I, that would have been like what I focused on and what I needed to do to get that. But instead of like that, which is also fine if that's what you want, like do what you want. I will always like, whatever it is you want to do, I support you. But for me, like I just shifted it to, um, you know, more uh, almost like a kind of a bigger picture rather than like a specific. So it's like, what, no, what do I really want? I really want joy. I really want to just wake up when I want to wake up and not not uh, follow any sort of time. I want all of my needs to be met. Um, I want to be able to, you know, like go on a vacation when, you know, <laughs> like things are like, I want to see the world, you know? So it's like, I want to see the world. And then rather than like carefully orchestrating is like what Mumble Fairy said, like just take action on that next exciting thing and just keep taking actions, like follow the yellow brick road or follow the, the breadcrumbs. And then I see what opens up for me of things that I couldn't have even imagined because that they weren't in my realm of experience yet. And so, and, and anyhow, and also like with that, like learning about my human design, if any of you are interested, that was like a little bit helpful for me too, because I realized that um, part of like my system is I'm um, like a response. And so when I was being a little bit hard on myself sometimes, cause I'm not the kind of person that you ask, what do you want? And I'd be like, I don't, well, I don't really know. I, I want everything. Like I want everything and nothing. Right. Like, but I never have like this undying, like passion. Like I'm a hummingbird. I like lots of different things and I like to learn about whatever. Um, but I realized that in part of my human design, like that I'm, I go off of response. And so if you present something to me, I can then that's when I'm like, yes, or, or no, like, yes, this, yes, this is great. And it excites me. And I can like, then feel into that if it excites me or if it doesn't rather than like just trying to come up with it. So that was also helpful for me. If it, if that is helpful for anybody, Ezra. Yeah. Um, mine is like my internet is being wonky, so I'm not, can you guys hear me? Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, <clears throat> I really like this, this, uh, strain of conversation, Maria, like it's, it, it's definitely, um, I definitely vibe with that idea of, of manifestation and like how, um, often we like, we can't really help it, but we put conditions on what we want. And so that, that is limiting. Right. And I do like, I just recently did a research project about, and one of the things I, I ended up having to read about that was very interesting was about like, um, the militarization of language and essentially what it, what that made me think about was how, um, militarization or colonization of language, uh, creates a, um, 
like we can only really see what we have language for. And like they've actually done studies on like there's groups of people that um, in their language, they don't have like a name for the color green um, or blue, one of the two. And so they literally like don't see that color. Um, but they have a ton of words like for shades of the color that they do see, whether it's blue or green. I can't remember which one. Um, and it made me, you know, like when you hear a new word, when you learn a new word and you start to hear it everywhere, it's not because that word suddenly started happening more. It's because you could hear it now. And so the when we like uh, the again, I'm not I don't tr I'm trying not to like. I don't think that a lot of this is intentional. Um, I'm sure some of it is, but we are given language that perpetuates a way of living that we can't even imagine something else because we literally don't have language for it. Like our brain can't think in that direction. And so that's actually what to me, like the essence of liberation means. Like, I think like there's like an idea of what that what it means and then that's what it means for me is like trying to find all the different ways that like I have been limited in my thinking and therefore my being um in order like because just because of the way that language is constructed like it's um and so when it comes to like manifest manifesting my, my brain wanted to put it on the syllable on the end <laughs> manifesting um but like that is why putting so many conditions on it is so limiting is because that makes it so that there's this very narrow scope of what you are allowed to receive so if you're saying a hundred thousand dollars and that's just it kind of creates you know okay well maybe you'll get that but you'll get exactly that <laughs> um because we have uh the way that our brain is currently structured and it's changing every year that's why it's so cool to have like this yearly practice I and mean, then you can go back and be like wow my mind's my mind has expanded you know um <clears throat> since like there's gonna be so many ways and it really feels like this year especially is like going to it's 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 something it's like blooming that's why the spring feels so springy this year <laughs> i don't know um it feels like there is an expansion that we're all really feeling and it's a, like uh that made me feel like there's a lot of people that are really tired right now like almost every person that i meet is just like god i'm so tired like they will just tell me that all the time and it feels like things are maybe like stretching further than they have before in this expansion um and that even people who are not um that aware of like the spiritual or magical world they're feeling it and they're just like what is going on <laughs> you know um because of that but um but yeah i think that's all i had to say um maria do you have something to add again or do we want to go to jenny lee um uh, let's let uh, Jenny Lee go ahead and then I can go after that. Okay. So this line of discussion brought up this terrible thing that I do that is so control oriented and I've been working on not doing it, but I've done it since I was a kid. I get really comfortable in bed. You're laying there and you're trying to go to sleep. And then you're like, you know, I need a drink of water. I didn't get any, but I'm really comfortable. So I'm going to lay here. If I have to move four times before I fall asleep, I'll get up and go get the drink of water. As soon as I say that and put it in my head, I immediately have to itch my leg. My shoulder falls out of socket, whatever. So it's, it's those like a self-fulfilling prophecy kind of thing. You make yourself do that because you put it in your head to begin with. 
So like Ezra was saying, if you don't have the words, you don't have the problem. But if you don't have the words, you also can't see the experience. So, you know, it's a, a double-edged sword from the way I think of about it is I don't, I don't have that issue to deal with, but I also don't have that potential that I can go get if I'm thinking so linear, linear, you know, if I'm thinking in a line, um, you know, that word I can't say. Um, and I, I really want to get out of the habit of being such a practical thinker and more in the habit of being an open thinker where I can see more, where I can, I don't know how to say it, where I can see more opportunities and I don't limit myself. Does that make sense? Um, and I think, so my mother-in-law can literally, she she can grow tomatoes in the Arctic. Um, she can plant them in the snow and they would grow. Um, so I can't grow a lot of things and I've never learned how. So out of I'm getting out of my comfort zone this spring and I'm going to help her in the garden. And I feel like that's opening up a lot more for me but I still have the control issues I still want to draw the garden out on grid paper and make sure we have <laughs> the the right amount of space and things but it's okay because if I can release a little bit next time I can release a little bit more so all, all of this is kind of tying together the things that I'm working on for spring and I really like the way our conversations do that. Thanks, Jenny Lee. It actually was a great segue into what I was thinking. Um, I think that when you, so part of my journey is, so you, and, and Jen, Jenny Lee, like what, and what you kind of said is like one of the amazing things that has happened is you recognize what you don't prefer. So you actually like, ha you actually, that is like an awesome thing to have happen is to just kind of recognize that and getting out and doing something that you wouldn't normally do brings that change energy because you're, you're changing it up and like shifting that. So that's also amazing. Um, and what I wanted to say is like my, my, the way the the, where I am also like where, where I came from is sort of like, <clears throat> I, I, I suppose sometimes when I was just getting pinged to like, talk about a little bit of like the shadow work piece and of the sorting, sorting it kind of out piece and, I do come from, you know, a place where I've processed trauma and really did the like deep dive into the shadow work with like a little bit of magic, but I feel like a, when I first started, it was like mostly sh the shadow work and doing that as a witch, but, and that there is a, it seems to me that there there is that piece that is of safety is in, involves you know and I work with another mentor as well and we were talking about like the ego and you know the ego like not having enough data on like what is safe you know as well and so you can kind of feel that like resistance and like that's like you know I'm like thank you to my ego for like you know protecting me in that way but like you know it it is it it's like it's it's just all like really I don't like I, I, what I'm trying to say is I don't want to say it's like complex because but it, it's lots of like weaving 
I'll put it that way. It's like lots of this weaving because um, complicated doesn't feel right. It does, that didn't feel like right to say, but it's just like, like a lot of this weaving and that it is truly like your own journey and like how you want to flow with this you know, if any of this is like pinging for you in terms of the manifestation piece, but I, because of other conversations that we've had, I also just wanted to recognize that the reason why bright and dark does the shadow work piece with the magical piece is because that part's important too, like as part of, of this process. And if you, if you're just starting out and that's where you are in more of like the sorting out, like reconnecting with yourself um you know doing the shadow work um doing the deconstruction to really figure to really uh, embody and speak and like Ezra that you brought up language is interesting you know what it is you truly want you know not something that was put on us by society or by other people but like what it is that you you truly want and we all you know have like our unique here and doing that shadow work piece and that deconstruction and the that part of it helps then to kind of feel in your power to just pro like proclaim like oh this is this is what I want you know and you have you reserve the right to change your mind anytime as well you know like if you're feeling into something and you're feeling like you know what the the data is showing me I need to just kind of pivot and that, and then you pivot. So, but the beauty of it is that doing that kind of deconstruction and that shadow work is um, tapping into where that comes from a place of like, that's very authentic to you personally. Uh, so I just felt like I wanted to kind of share that and thank you for allowing me to, let's see. I can't tell. I think Ezra, I don't know if your hand, was up from before and mf has their hand up let me see i put it up again but mf can go first okay mf go for it sorry lots of running around i'm still listening to everything you're all saying i think it's amazing i would say that that definitely um i would say that as far as manifestation work goes it kind of deeply ties into shadow work so i did join foundations in january but months before that i had started down a shadow work journey and realized shortly before joining foundations at the end of December that I had stalled out in that work and I needed some extra support to move forward in it. But I think tying into manifestation, what I realized, it, what I was like initially trying to manifest was really specific. And then I really kind of deconstructing well, why, like um, for instance, just as an example, something that I really wanted was I kept saying, I really want a safe house in the woods with my kids. I really want a safe house in the woods with my kids. And the word safety kept coming up. And then I kind of started to deconstruct that. Like, what is it about a safe house that I'm thinking about? And it's because as a kid, I never felt safe in my house. I never felt safe growing up. I didn't feel safe with the adults that were in my life. You know, I had my siblings who were amazing, but they were children too. So they couldn't you know, they couldn't do what they needed to do to, to be the adults that they needed to, that they, that they wanted to be, you know? And so I think that it can all, at least for me, it, it's all linked. And I think a lot of other people when they're doing this work, realize that it's linked, you know, that they're seeking out these things, um, you know, and recognizing for me, like mm, maybe my living situation needs to change and what do I actually want? And what does that mean? And why do I want these specific things? And what can I do to broaden that to, you know, get to a fulfilled place in life? That's just my final thought on that, I think. Ezra? Yeah, with this, um, when you guys were talking and Jenny Lee said something that, um, stuck with me about like it I also think that there's like a a way there's a language for your body that is like connected to but separate from like actual or not actual that's 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 hierarchical but you know verbal language auditory language um 
And so when we were talking about um, like the idea that you don't really have the potential for it because you don't have the language for it, I think that our bodies um, and probably, you know, probably our energetic body as well, like um, tries to communicate things that are very deeply true for us and so then when sometimes like if you've ever learned a word and you're like oh that's the name of that feeling or that's the situation that I'm in but you didn't have that so you just kind of had this like deep um you just had this kind of like either confusion or discontentment or like longing in your in your body that you couldn't really place um I think there is, you know, a truth in that as well. So I, I just wanted to say that like, um, like you do have the potential, even if you don't have the language for it um, yet. And the, what that brought up was that I think that the way that the universe is structured is that you can't really, you can't really do anything wrong. Like if you go down a side quest, um, it's not, you know, you didn't take like some, you know, detour and you're not like, uh, incorrect or stupid or, you know, slow or whatever it is because you did that. Like that was where you were meant, like, that's what, that's part of your journey. And what that may, and I keep on coming back to this poem from Rumi that, um, I, that I really, that I just found the other day by accident. And it, it said like, it, I'm just going to read what I, it's pretty short because I just keep thinking about it. And I think it's related to this. It says, I reach for a piece of wood. It turns into a lute. I do some meanness. It turns out helpful. I say one must not travel during the holy month. Then I start out and wonderful things happen. In complete control, pretending control, with dignified authority, we are charlatans. Or maybe just a goat's hair brush in a painter's hand. We have no idea what we are. And I really, I don't know, that, that really just like makes me think all the time of like, we have no idea, like if we, like sometimes I'll say something and I'll just be like, oh gosh, that was mean. <laughs> and I'm like, damn it. Now I have all this like shadow work to do around like why I thought that and I did that thing wrong. And like, I, th I was getting so much better about like not being, you know, uh, ableist or, <laughs> or whatever it is like, uh, and suddenly it came up again, but it does, it turns out helpful. Like if I let it, like if I'm not sitting there concentrating on like, oh, what a bad person I am or, you know, how I should be farther along it turns out helpful. And if I start thinking about all of the things that happen in my life as like, I don't know what brush brush stroke this is creating, like this could be exactly, and I, in, in my opinion, it is exactly what, where this was supposed to land. Like that's the exact like kind of stroke it was supposed to, it was supposed to take shape. So Eric. I love your nails, by the way. I keep on looking at them. Like, it's very oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, I mean, I feel like in a lot of ways, what Ezra just said was kind of like ans answering the question I was about to ask. But, um, um, and this is kind of in response to Maria. Is that okay, Maria? Um, uh, so a lot of what Maria said resonated with me and I, I kind of feel like I'm in a job that has is sort of like worn out and played out and like I'm like it's not really I, I kind of like I'm done done with trying to make it work sort of um trying to make it anyway um but I'm also not sure like what the next thing will be yet like what the next uh, like I have inklings you know maybe of 
glimmers of things that could be. And so I'm not, I'm not really sure what the next thing is yet, but I'm like, but I am sure that this thing is like worn out and here I am, you know, and I think I have to be here for at least a little while longer. So kind of like any thoughts or advice about like, uh, or reactions to that would be welcome. And then also like, I think a big part of like that system that Maria described of like, well, if you keep doing the same thing and putting energy into it, the universe thinks, oh, well, you want more of that. So here's more of it. Like that may like, <laughs> that really like pulled the rug out from under me. But like, um, you know, are there, like, how do I start like knowing that I have to be in this work environment for at least a little while longer? Like how to start signaling something different in that? Um, is just something I'm thinking about. And then also there's a lot of fear for me around, like I've always, like like Maria, I've been in this job like for a long time. And I'm like, I've always supported myself through this job. And I, I'm, I know there are different ways to support myself, but like I haven't done it like personally. And so it's very scary to me to kind of like think, to like just not not have like actual experience doing other things and knowing that I'm going to be okay doing those other things or just some things that I'm feeling around what what Maria said. So thank you, Maria and Ezra and everybody. So not that I can fully like answer completely because I'm very much in the same situation as you are. Um, so some things that I am doing is just, so even though the same situation, like, okay, I'm still, you know, in this job, I recognize that when I, you know, like I wake up every day and I do not prefer to go to it, but I'm going to it. And that is recognizing like how that's wearing, you know, on me. So like one of that, the things was just kind of, okay, there's something here still. And I am too, like I, um, have a mortgage and therefore I, you know, like I, I feel, I feel like I, I couldn't just quit, you know, um, unless I were to make like other shifts. But so one thing was just to one support, knowing like supporting my system through that, like um, I started to take breaks at like work. I like actually eat lunch. I take like breaks to get <laughs> water. Um, I take my days off, like just <laughs> to kind of support, you know, my system through this. Um, I don't work late anymore. Like, so there were changes within the job that I could, I realized that I could start doing and, and those things that like I could do. The second thing was, is like that searching, like, okay, like is, what is the, is there any like shadow work here? Are there, what are like the lesson kind of bits in it, in it for me? And that's kind of the part that I'm, I'm also, you know, exploring like, why, why do I feel such this responsibility? Like, you know, what, like, and, and really just kind of exploring that. And that's just kind of shifted my relationship with, with my job. And I will tell you, like at one point, a few months ago, I like, there were some days that I was like staring at my computer and I'm like, okay, like, what, are, you know, like, do I want to get fired? Like, what, are, like, is that what we're trying to do? Like, what are, you know, what are we doing? And so I, I kind of like, I'm still doing my job as part of like, you know, what like my responsibilities are and, you know, to with my coworkers and the work that um, I do, I kind of took, but I kind of like, I was so in it that I'm, I've started to like take a scaled out perspective of it to just observe. And I'm trying to like be an observer while you know meeting my responsibilities but I'm trying to like observe to see what I can see from a scaled out perspective and what I realized is like these things that I was like really worried about and, and anxious about um stressed out about and changing my relationship with and you know that part of it 
And so I just kind of leave that there, but I, I'm just, I'm just trying to like take a scaled out look at things um, and, and sit, sit sometimes as an observer. So I can just kind of see again, like what, what is, what was here for me? Um, what are the shadow bits that still need to work through and then what, and then, but then also within that, it is like, well, what do you prefer? What, you know, and, and I, I had to get rid of the fact that I was going to identify a job because I'm, I'm not like identify the next job. Like I'm not. So for me, it's just like sitting of like fall, like just trying to see, like recognize and take data on what does excite me. Um, and that's really like it because I don't have the, enough information to like do the next thing at this very point. And so um, maybe there was something else I wanted to say, um, but it's gone. So, um, but yeah, I hope, you know, and like, and, and also like, I'm with you, like I, if you ever want to talk more about it or, you know, like I, I also just, I'm supporting, you know, you and, um, the, the, the big thing was like the, um, the belief that I had to stay because it was the only job that would pay me this amount of money. Um, so a lot of it for me is this, is the belief work around, um, what I can do to support myself, my beliefs around money, like my beliefs are shifting to like, well, there are other ways that my needs can be met besides money, the belief that I kind of pigeonhole myself into this, such this specialty that no one else will pay me what I'm making because I've been right. Like you've been there for so long, like, you know, all the things like we're told, like you have seniority and blah, 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 blah. And, but, but there is a belief that I will not be able to leave and make the same amount of money or more. And so it's that belief work that I'm, I'm doing and it's, it's really hard for me to separate it away from money, like to not have the, the kind of the manifestation, the deeper work, like I, cause it was really money focused for so long because that was a insecurity for me growing up, um, where I was, you know, an insecure about money, like insecure about being able to pay my bills on time, seeing my mom in, in a struggle and things like that. And so like, that's, and so it's like brings up all of this inner child work, like this sorting out bit. And so when I kind of said it was like that, sometimes it's complicated. I really, I really don't think it's, it's complicated, but what really resonated with me is that it's like weaving, like, I'm just like, then I'm weaving my new web of, of it and just accepting that in my younger years, because I was controlling my environment out of a need to be safe, I would precisely identify what I needed to do and I would take the action to do that. And that worked for me. And so, you know, like, okay, like go to college, get your nursing license. Now you're a nurse and now get this job. And then it then it, and then just stopped that type of, for me, right now it's gone. And I was like, what the fuck? Like, where's the next thing? Like, why, why won't somebody tell me what the next thing is? And I was like confused by it. And I'm like, okay, well, let's just sit here. And I was like, oh, you're supposed to just, this is like a, I felt like I was in a holding for a long time, you know, I, but and now I feel like it's coming, is coming to an end. But all of what I just said about like, the sorting out bit was very valuable. And, and that's kind of how I'm engaging with it at this point is like just the sorting out on what my beliefs are about it. MF. Okay. So I'm going to come at this from a slightly, not slightly, completely different approach. Um, I love everything that Maria had to say. And I think de the deconstruction piece, the shadow work piece, all that is super important. But as someone who recently changed their job, I have a couple of thoughts um, after working somewhere for five years. And it, there can be something really empowering about going and updating your resume and just 
literally writing out every single thing that you do because I think it's really easy to take for granted especially if you've been somewhere for a really long time like take for granted that you know what you do is easy or what you do is replaceable and and yeah from a corporate standpoint everyone's replaceable and it's ridiculous but what you do likely has a huge impact on the people that you work with. And there's probably a lot of things that you are doing that are not necessarily in your job description. And why I say that is because the reframe to this is that you probably have a lot of transferable skills. You probably have a lot of things that you're doing in your job that could be done in a completely different job and be completely transferable. Obviously, I don't know you, <laughs> but I am... I feel very confident, like, I feel very confident about this, like, just, even if it's not on your resume, make a list somewhere, write it out, you know, like, really think about it, talk to your coworkers, you know, what do they see that you're doing? What are things like, that, what are your limiting beliefs around this, that, that you, that is holding you back from looking at other jobs that, that these skills could be transferred to, because, you know, just have, being, having worked parallel to HR most of my career, I can tell you a lot of companies want to hire people who are going to be a good fit. I hate this saying this, but culturally and not necessarily like, you know, can this person be trained? Can this person learn how to do this? Do they have skills that kind of align with this? You know, so sorry that I'm pulling in the corporate jargon aspect of this, but I just felt really inspired to say this. Like there are, there are so many other things you could be doing that could be more fulfilling or could be with a company that you more closely align with, or, you know, just something that fulfills you. But I, I also don't feel like my job is what fulfills me. Like I am glad that I moved a job and I, it was just the absolute best thing I could have done for myself. But I also feel like there's so much fulfillment outside of this stupid late stage capitalism bullshit. Like what, is going to fulfill you. And I know your job just has so much to do with your day and like you shouldn't be somewhere that you're miserable at. But in addition to the quote unquote quiet quitting of just doing your actual job description and not, you know, working super late, actually taking breaks, taking your time off, doing those things to take care of yourself while you are there. There is so much you could be doing that you may not even know about. Just just explore, you know. Okay. Thank you. All right. I actually wrote it down. So this the most difficult thing that that I find for people that that transit the the most difficult bridge for people to cross <laughs> being a bridge witch uh is the the looking at their lives outside of the lens of capitalism. That is the most difficult bridge for witches to cross. And it takes time, but it is very necessary because your path and your magic is aligned with your authentic experience, not capitalism, <laughs> not how you participate in capitalism. Capitalism is a social agreement right that's a social agreement and so when you are looking at like what do i want to manifest what what is the life that i want to manifest look at how you want to participate in your lived experience what do you want that to look like right uh for me that's waking up and going down into a like busy kitchen full of witches talking about setting up their day. Um, it looks like going out and actively participating in growing the food that I'm feeding my body. Uh, it is a more monastic approach to life. Very simple. Very few responsibilities outside of, you know, my calling, what I'm, I'm here to do. And so that's that's like the big key thing you know i want i see chickens i want to be around chickens i want to be around animals things like that things that make you feel alive and like you are actively participating 
in your lived experience. A lot of capitalism, blah, 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 capitalism and the patriarchy separates us from that participation in our actual lived experience and has us participating fully in this social agreement. Does that make sense? Right. And so when you look at your life, there are so many small ways that we are participating and perpetuating capitalism by like just how we live our lives. And, you know, I'm a huge advocate for communal living <laughs> uh, and have been for a long time, but also understand that that takes training on how to, to do that. Um, but sometimes our independence is what is keeping us in this perpetual state of exhaustion because to live independently, you have to work more, you have to contribute, you have to participate more in order to in like financially support that. Does that make sense? So in what ways can you change the way that you your lifestyle and i'm not saying that that communal living is the answer to everyone but looking at what ways you want to participate in your lived experience is definitely like one of those things um when you start again being more active in partis like when you start hauling water <laughs> right instead of taking for granted that you could just like turn on the faucet being able to turn on that faucet costs you but it costs you your your time and your energy because you have to pay for that bill right when you go haul water it takes more time but that time is spent actively participating in your life not in a system that you don't uh like emotionally and like spiritually support does that make sense and this isn't like i'm trying to put the weight of the world on you and we we get into this like you know i have to make big changes in order to make a difference or we get into these like shame spirals that's a waste of our time <laughs> no shame we were given this system we were given this uh and it's a process to get to that point of awareness where we are looking at how we're participating and what we're participating in. Um, but when it comes to manifestation, what you choose to participate in has a huge impact on that. And so if you're continuing to participate in something that is contrary to what your authentic nature is like calling you to do, you will perpetuate that. Your attention is your magic. You are lending your magic to a system that you don't support when you choose to participate in it. Does that make sense? So what even planting a zucchini plant and choosing to eat from the zucchini plant instead of buying from a grocery store or choosing to cultivate a relationship with your local farmer uh, rather than going to the grocery store is going to make a huge difference in your life. That that one little change is massive, right? Because you're actively engaging in a life that you want, even if it's just, you know, a potted zucchini plant on the balcony of your apartment. <laughs> it's a, it, even the little things. Go ahead, Maria. I'm going to get off my soapbox. <laughs> I'm, I'm passionate about this. So. so I think from this conversation inspired by Eric, thank you. I kind of wrote down um, burnout. So I think that what I'm experiencing is burnout and that's why I don't know what to do next because I don't probably need to do anything I need to, because when I, you know, feeling into like the things I know what I don't prefer, that is very clear. Sometimes it's like, again, I'm waiting for that inspiration. I can respond in the moment if I'm excited about it or not, but not like, receiving kind of inspiration in terms of like a path doing my doing this work with the with all y'all witches is very highlighted I and very something that I prefer and that's enjoyable that I am excited about that doesn't tire me whatsoever I could I could sit here with you all for seven hours and easily 
no problem. Um, so like exploring that like burnout and then how to support my system is maybe what is being called for me right now. Um, and that also like that idea too, like what you said, like, you know, that you don't have to do it, do it alone, but there is like that, you know, that belief work with it as well. So that's all. Thank you. We are coming to the end of our time together this glorious Sunday. Those are fun conversations. I love sass. I love sass. I love you guys. I love that we have this space that we can do this and just like talk about real shit, you know. I am very excited about this sun. This uh this year is it feels pivotal. It feels like, but in this excited, our ancestors are celebrating kinds of ways. Um, and I can't wait to see how that unfolds. And I am looking forward to it unfolding uh, and with you guys, I guess, us experiencing it together. Well. Baxter is snoring on my lap. It's pretty funny. <laughs> a little, little kitten snoring. <sighs> Closing is hard sometimes. Like I'm becoming increasingly aware of the connections we build when we're in these spaces. I'm becoming increasingly aware of the contrast of this like, you know, temple slash monastery I live in environment where it's very isolated and very quiet and very like oh with the mountains and whatever and then when we connect it's just this like I love it I prefer it I know that the mountains and solitude and sanctuary are a necessary part of our path uh, but it really, truly feels like my path is, uh, I'm coming out of hermit mode, <laughs> coming out of retirement and just engaging more and more with you guys, uh, both physically and virtually. <sighs> so have, yeah, ocean waves. Uh, I'll see you guys at Sacred Space on uh, the 7th, right? That's coming up soon. Uh, I host the earlier one and Maria hosts the, the later one. And we co-facilitate with the After Dark Witches that have been through this working before. Uh, so I'm looking forward to seeing you guys there. And every morning we've been doing the uh, the lives on Instagram, which is super fun. I love it when you guys show up and, and interact. It absolutely feels like I'm hanging out somewhere and my friends are showing up and we're like taking over some coffee shop or whatever. Uh, so have fun with that visual, but that's totally what's going on with me when you guys show up in the lives. We are going to start something totally new on Tuesday and I would love for you guys to show up. It's at 1130 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. And it is similar to what we do here, but it's with the After Dark Witches. And we're going to start answering the questions that are submitted to our website and to like our social media. Things like, you know, uh, how do I remove a curse? Is this a curse? Uh, advice for new witches. How do I set up an altar? Those kinds of things. And having these like open conversations with several witches. Uh, I think I feel compelled to start doing that more. So that's going to happen on Tuesdays and we're calling it wisdom in the weave. And so far it's just on Instagram, but we are still working on how to do the multi-streaming so that it's also on YouTube and TikTok and Facebook. It's tech and I'm not a tech witch. So we're, we're working on it. <sighs> All right, witches. Go get them. Have a great Sunday. Love you. Bye.
And Persephone so cute. Bye, everyone. Have a good day, Maria. You too. Pop in the